The Villa of the Papyrus was a private house in the ancient Roman city of Herculaneum. The villa was considered to be one of the most luxurious houses in the Roman world. The villa was owned by Julius Caesar's father-in-law, Lucius Calpurnius Piso Caesonius. The name of the villa derives from the discovery of a library in the house containing more than 1,800 papyrus scrolls. The library discovered is the only surviving library from the Greek and Roman world that exists in its entirety. The papyrus scrolls were unrolled and read after various methods of manipulation. They were found to come from a Greek philosopher named Philodemus. The philosophy of Philodemus was that man is mortal, that the cosmos is the result of accident, that there is no providential God, and the criteria of a good life is pleasure and temperance. Lucius Calpurnius Piso Caesonius, the owner of the villa, was greatly influenced by Philodemus, which is why most of his work was located in the library of the villa. The scrolls found in the villa were made from papyrus, which grows in the marshy areas around the Nile River. The papyrus was then peeled into strips. These strips were laid into rows, one horizontal and one vertical. These rows were pressed onto each other, which formed a volumen or scroll. The amazing thing was that no glue was required to join the papyrus together because of the natural gum of the plant held the scroll together. Everything was done naturally. The villa's front stretched for more than 250 meters parallel to the coastline of what was now called the Gulf of Naples. It was also surrounded by a garden closed off by porticos, which come from the Latin word porticus, meaning porch. There was also an ample stretch of vegetable gardens, vineyards, and woods down to a small harbor. The atrium of the villa worked as an entrance hall and a means of communication with various parts of the house. The atrium in a traditional Roman house is a large open air or skylight covered space which was surrounded by the rest of the villa. The entrance of the villa opened with a columned porch on the seaside. Around the atrium and pluvium, which was the sunken part of the atrium designed to carry rain water away, were 11 fountain statues depicting satyrs pouring water from a pitcher and amorini pouring water from the mouth of a dolphin. An Amorini was a statue of an infant Cupid. And a satyr was a drunken woodland god, which was depicted as a male whose ears and tail represented a horse, as well as their feet. The first peristyle had 10 columns on each side and a swimming bath in the center. A peristyle was a row of columns surrounding a space within a building, such as a porch, garden, or court. In this enclosure, a herma of an Amazon made by Apollonius, son of Archaeus of Athens, was found. A herma was a statue with a head and a squared lower section. The large second peristyle could be reached by passing through a large tablinum. The tablinum was a room on one side of the atrium with a large fenestra or window. It opened up to the back of the peristyle. In the tablinum, was the archaic statue of Athena Promachus, located under the Propylion. This was the structure which formed the entrance to a temple. The Athena Promachus was a colossal bronze statue of Athena, which stood on the Acropolis of Athens. The villa had many grand and elegant statues like this one, which enhanced its beauty. The real living and reception quarters were grouped around the porches and terraces which gave occupants ample sunlight and a view of the countryside and sea. In the living quarters, there was a bibliotheca or library where rolled and carbonized papyrus scrolls placed inside wooden capsi were found. This was a wooden cylindrical case for scrolls. Most of the scrolls were found sitting on wooden shelves or on the walls of the library and some were on two sides of a set of shelves in the middle of the room. The Villa of the Papyrus was the most luxurious house ever in Roman times. So luxurious, in fact, 
that in the 1970s, a model of the villa was designed in Malibu, California. It's free for all to visit and keeps with the general architecture of the original villa.